I came across this and I decided to bring it here to share with us. Top US general says that Islamic jihadist terrorism in Africa has soared tenfold over 26 years. General Michael Langley. And then he said it has increased tenfold. And then I ask, when did the US um, troops leave the Sahel regions? At what point did they leave since they, they, they have increased now? And when they were there, what was going on? Just like the Prime Minister for Senegal asked, what was going on when they were all there? Let's listen to him. Let's, let's hear him. Back in 2008, Islamic jihadists on the global scene, only 4% was on African continent. Now that number is up to 40%. So in executing AFRICOM's mission of being able to provide indications and warnings, monitor and respond, is all for protection of the homeland. When we look at the threat of the People's Republic of China, we know that they are exploitative for possible and coercive when necessary, when they engage with continent, uh, across the continent. Through the Belt and Road Initiative first, but sometimes they have aspirations of military capacity and capability. They already have a base at Dorle in Djibouti. Time will tell what their overall aspirations are. Will it be power projection? Or will it be air denial and defense? We don't know. Right now they say it's for counter piracy. So we are monitoring all the time of what the PRC's overall global intentions are in the strategic realm. Let me turn to uh, the Russian Federation. Yes, in the last few years, we saw the activities of Wagner encroaching upon a number of African countries and then sowing the seeds of disinformation, trying to get to be the uh, security partner of choice, a number of these countries across the Sahel, all the way down to the Central African Republic and as far north as Libya. So through their disinformation campaigns, it has evolved into the sponsorship of the Russian MOD after the demise of Bugini Bregosian. So we're seeing that and we monitor that on a, on, on a, on a uh, full basis to identify what the overall strategic imperatives or aspirations of the Russian Federation. And we're closely monitoring activities by Iran. What the U.S. needs to do, we need to increase our information operations. We need to be able to match what our assurance actions are, especially whole a government approach in being able to partner with our African uh, partners uh, addressing some of their challenges, uh, challenges ex that extend from climate change to violent extremist organization, that we have the overall value proposition by being able to uh, harvest our shared values and shared objectives of stability and security. I think that our assurance actions and what we offer uh, holistically across State Department and diplomacy, across USAID and development, across the Department of Defense and building partnership and capacity of their security forces is the whole enduring solution, especially when we're talking about violent extremist organizations. About Niger and about our uh, repositioning and uh, moving of our equipment and assets out of Niger, we're on pace. And I think that uh, I'm sure that we're gonna uh, keep uh, reaching those benchmarks. Our withdrawal out of there will be uh, responsible and, uh, and uh, first and foremost, safety of our troops is, is first and foremost, but a responsible and orderly withdrawal uh, that's agreed by both the U.S. government and the, uh, the, the transitional government of the CNSP in Niger has been agreed upon. I think we'll hit all those benchmarks and requirements.